Welcome to another drawing technical video. I've drawn this AutoCAD looking drawing in NanoCAD and honestly it looks like the results are quite good. But what was it like to use and experience NanoCAD? Is it worth paying for AutoCAD or are you better off with drawing for free in NanoCAD? Well you're about to find out. Don't buy AutoCAD until you've watched this. Hear out my comparison between AutoCAD and NanoCAD and I give my verdict at the end of the video so stick around to find out. In the past few weeks I've been having to use AutoCAD at work to draw some intricate details and as someone who's been using Revit for years I hated the transition at first but it was a necessary transition because Revit is completely useless when it comes to drawing very detailed and intricate drawings. On the other hand, I found that AutoCAD requires too much accuracy and care for detail. For example, when I draw a square or some sort of shape in AutoCAD using the line tool, I find that I need to check if the shape has snapped accurately, if the lines have snapped together properly. Sometimes there's a slight millimeter gap between the connections. Maybe I just need more practice with it. Now everyone knows that AutoCAD or Autodesk products in general cost a gold bar or two. Who's got a gold bar lying around to give away? There's no feasible way to pay for AutoCAD unless you're a big company making enough money to pay for regular licenses every year. There is a feasible alternative for smaller companies or sole practitioners called AutoCAD LT. I've actually paid for this one because it's affordable. I've made some videos using AutoCAD LT and you can find them somewhere on my channel. It costs something like £54 a month or £600 a year or something. But what about for those of us who just need a free software to just try out drawing or to start some sort of CAD business? Is there anything we can use to practice without any strings attached? Well, what you've been watching on screen since I've been presenting. This is NanoCAD. I'll say right from the start that compared to the smooth interface and experience of AutoCAD, NanoCAD feels like a clunky software. Clunky. It's not as graceful as AutoCAD. But that's okay because NanoCAD is free so I'm not too bothered about that. But it does cause issues while trying to use it and you're about to find out what they are. The reason I've brought it up and the reason I'm making this video is because I want to know if NanoCAD is any good for practical business use. If I do any extension designs for people, will I be able to put AutoCAD aside and just continue with NanoCAD? What you're watching on screen right now is actually my first time using NanoCAD to draw a raft foundation detail. NanoCAD works very similar to AutoCAD even the setting menus are virtually the same. When you go into the dim style menu, you'll find that it's exactly the same as the AutoCAD dim style menu. You might see in the video here that there are parts where I'm struggling with NanoCAD. Sometimes, or a lot of the times, you're just trying to click on a point, maybe the corner of a rectangle, or the end of a certain line in a cluster of lines. The snapper guide appears to have its own mind and wants you to click somewhere else and this is quite frustrating. You have to constantly go back up to the tools and check or uncheck the snappers you want and this feels very tedious and it causes me to fatigue in using NanoCAD. I simply want to be able to click the snappers that I need and just w without having to change my settings just carry on working. I'm able to do this in AutoCAD, but not in NanoCAD, so that's something to look at. But you know, it's not that much of a big deal, I can, uh, since it's free. Some of you might be looking at me and wondering what I'm complaining for when the software is free. As if just because it's free, it's okay to have issues. I don't care if it's free. I'm trying to see if this software is good enough to use on its own, or will I have to throw it out and just pay for AutoCAD? To me, it's a software being offered as an alternative solution. So I'm criticizing it in order to encourage, in order to encourage further development. In case you haven't noticed, 
I actually like this software. It uh, just needs some work to make it better. Now there's another problem in NanoCAD which I think needs attention and it's to do with zooming in. First of all, with any software, whether it's Revit, AutoCAD or NanoCAD, I personally dislike having to zoom in and out a lot to check connections. I find it a highly frustrating way of working. For example, when you draw a rectangle and then you're zooming into one corner to check if it's connected properly, then you zoom out and then zoom into another corner to check if it's connected properly. And you do this for all of the corners. I hate having to do this. There needs to be a more practical way of doing this where I don't have to scroll the mouse constantly just to investigate something. I have a practical idea, a practical solution that could work. And this is a feature that's actually in the mobile version of Premium AutoCAD. So I'll just show you a clip here of how it's working in the mobile AutoCAD. In NanoCAD, when you zoom in to see some detail a bit closer, you suddenly lose control of everything. And so you have to zoom out to get your control back. It feels like it might be some kind of bug or glitch, or maybe AutoCAD has more pixels in its interface, for lack of better terms. When you're using AutoCAD, it feels very smooth. And when you're using NanoCAD, it feels very, very, I don't know the correct word for it, pixelated or it, it's not smooth. It's, I don't know, to put it into terms that a video maker would understand, it feels like AutoCAD runs on 60 frame rates per second. And NanoCAD is running on like 10 frame rates per second. It's laggy. That's the word. It feels laggy while AutoCAD feels smooth. And I think maybe it's probably the technology that's better. So can't really complain. NanoCAD can do something. It's just it's running on free technology. I'd be interested in donating to improve this software to make it smooth like AutoCAD. Or I might just pay for AutoCAD. Well, anyway, maybe that's why NanoCAD feels unrefined. I hate to complain too much, but this is a review video, a versus video, so I have to mention more points. One more slight annoyance that I have is that in NanoCAD, you have to select a color before selecting a tool. And this means that every time I want to change a color of a line that I'm about to draw, I have to exit out of the tool and change the color and then go back into the tool. Small things like this make the user experience a bit painful and frustrating. Nonetheless, would I use this software for serious work? Honestly, when using NanoCAD, I feel like my hand gets tired in jumping back and forward between the tools and having to constantly change settings and things like that just to get it to do what I want. And I'm very used to Revit, so I know how Revit works and even I find Revit annoying. So maybe this is something that every software needs to look into. It would be good to have to click less buttons to get the job that you want done. So if I have the line tool selected in NanoCAD, I should be able to change to any color I want and draw the line instead of having to go out of the tool and select a new color, then go back into the tool. Even talking about it is tedious. It feels... uh clunky. So, would I use this software for serious work? Serious work meaning extension designs for people and house designs for people. I know people who actually use this for real work, so I know it works. It's only my first time using this, so my prediction is that once I continue to practice and get more used to using the different tools, get more used to jumping back and forward between the tools. Perhaps I'll get a muscle memory of having to jump back and forward between the different tools. And then I might get comfortable with it and get used to it. I think maybe I could get comfortable with it. So for now, I'll continue to use it because I know that there are people out there who are using it for real work. So once I get more experience with it, I'll make a follow-up video giving my conclusion and look on the screen. I've just drawn a decent looking cross section of a raft foundation right in front of your eyes using NanoCAD. 
So, although it has a bit of a frustrating process, the end result turned out to be quite good. So this first try, it shows potential. And I'd rather use a free software anyway than pay a gold bar every time I want to renew my subscription with Autodesk. If only there was a decent replacement for Revit. But there's nothing like Revit out there. Some people have recommended me to try a CAD software called Blender instead. And the same people complain that Revit is rubbish. Uh, I've been using Revit for a long time. Seven or eight years, probably more. So I can't just drop Revit. I might have a look at Blender, but I can hardly see any adequate replacement for Revit out there. Revit is the one software which I'm going to have to pay for, so I'm saving up for the next subscription. Revit LT that is. For now it costs £600, so £600 a year. Autodesk, bring back perpetual licenses. I just want to buy a license once and keep the software forever. I don't want to pay for yearly subscriptions. Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe for practical architecture videos because I'm headed on a journey where I'll be providing architectural services soon. And if you're looking to do that too, you might as well follow me around for a bit because I teach and show whatever I know and learn. This is so that I can refer back to my own videos for reminder or guidance and keep my knowledge up so that ultimately I can provide the best and most thoughtful architectural service that I can. I'm going through the process of learning extension designs and I'm also actually working on some in real life right now. Practical knowledge people, don't miss out on it. Subscribe.